Way to warn go. <laughs> ah, that was fun, right? Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another video. I know it's been a while, but we're sure going to be looking at something very, very sensitive and very important. First, full disclaimer, I'm not responsible with what you choose to do with the information I'm about to give you. If you're asking the question, can we learn anything good from the most evil, the villain in every story, that is, of course, the devil himself. Well, of course, as you can see in this video, the answer is yes. We're going to be looking at seven critical lessons we can learn from the devil. And the objective of this video is not that you can learn these things and start practicing them also. The objective is that you should be able to reverse engineer these tactics so that you can beat the devil at his own game. I need you to watch till the end so that you get the full picture and understand everything. Also, along the line, I'm going to be sharing with you a very critical story that has a potential to change everything you think you know about the devil. Devil. So without further ado, the scriptures tell us that we must not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. So we are looking at seven critical lessons we can learn from the devil. Technically, seven devices of the enemy and how he's been using them against your life. Number one, and I think pretty much perhaps the most important thing we can learn from the devil is to kill the seed while it's still young. Okay, I'm saying it in a very savage way, but that's to make the point across. The devil is so cunning that he doesn't waste his time trying to go after the big tree that is already fully grown. And then, you know, if you want to chop down a tree, it's pretty difficult to chop down a full mature tree. But what if you waited and destroyed the seed? What if you waited and uprooted it while it was still a young shrub? That's exactly the devil's strategy. Think about your life. You know, the devil comes after kids. He brings different kinds of pollutions, different kinds of distractions to intoxicate and pollute their minds because if he succeeds in destroying them at that young age, then the battle is pretty much won. An interesting thing you realize is that all through history, we see people that were very cunning to apply the same principle that the devil applies. You know, you think of Pharaoh and he's trying to eliminate an entire race of the Israelites and then after punishing and turning them into slaves, he realized that these people are still very strong and very resistant. So he realized that he cannot break them while they are already adults. So what does he do? He goes for the babies. If he eliminates the babies, then the old ones wear out and pass away and all of that will be forgotten about that entire race. You look at King Herod. So he hears that there is a new king born and what does he do? He doesn't say, I'm going to wait for this king to grow old and challenge my throne before I see what we can do in battle. No. He sends out to eliminate the threat while it is still young. I think you should write this down. The easiest enemy to defeat is the enemy that was never born. Think about it. If you never started a particular habit, you will not be struggling in the battles that you're struggling about today. If you never met some certain people, if you, there are people that if you had never met in your life, you will not be where you are today. So the easiest enemy to defeat is the enemy that was never born. Of course, if we look at this, it goes in other ramifications, right? Even into your vision and your purpose. It's difficult to crumble a company that has already been established. It's difficult to kill a book that has already been written. It's difficult to kill a song, a vision, a dream that has already been delivered. What does the enemy do? He comes with seeds of doubt, seeds of fear, seeds of worry to kill that vision while it's still an idea in your mind. So all this why you're worrying, you're fearing, you're, you're, you're concerned instead of releasing it and materializing it so that the enemy cannot destroy it or he will have a very serious hard time trying to destroy it. Once it's still an idea, it's still a seed, it's still a baby, he comes for it and once he destroys it, He's never going to have anything to contend with tomorrow. So clearly, what do we learn from here? We have to protect our seed because the enemy, he comes for the seed. Once the seed is done and dusted, there is nothing left to worry about in the future. Remember, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So we have a responsibility to protect our seeds if we want to guarantee the future tomorrow. Whether it's the seeds of our visions, the seeds of our purpose, the seeds of any species. We talk of endangered species. How about the seed of the human race itself? abortion all over the place every seed needs to be protected sometime back i had an infestation of this pest and what i realized was once i waited for this pest to grow 
I had a hard time eliminating them. They were all mature. So what I started doing was I'll go and figure out where they have laid your ex in my house and get rid of the ex. If I get rid of the ex, I get rid of the old ones, there'll be no generation to replace them. That is the strategy. The second device of the enemy that we need to learn and master is why create a new lie when you can just twist the truth in a very subtle way that people don't realize. Well, I hate to shock you, but uh, if you may not know, majority of churches today are actually working victims of this strategy. You know, the devil just comes and picks a scripture, you know, judge not, Matthew 7 verse 1. Of course, that's a portion of scripture that goes from verse 1 to verse 5. Jesus is giving the conditions, don't judge your brother, why you also are guilty of the thing that you're judging him. He says, first remove the plank in your own eye before you can remove the speck in your brother's eye. So technically, you're actually allowed to tell your brother, man, you have a speck in your eye, let me help you remove it. But his concern was people were being hypocrites. They were guilty of the thing they are correcting someone else. now we have turned that around well maybe not us but the devil that's his strategy into judge not because you are guilty of something else so what did jesus say jesus said only correct your brother and help him overcome something if you yourself have mastered that thing so if i have mastered financial management and you have mastered self-control i can come and tell you the way you're managing your finances this is not right. You need to put things right. And I help you manage your finances very well, just the way I've mastered. Likewise, you can come and tell me the life I'm living without self-control is detrimental to me because you have mastered that. And then you can help me. But of course, no, the devil is smart. He's not going to tell you something new. All he comes and tells you is, judge not. So those of you who are not living in Africa, if you decided sometime that you want to relocate and start living in Africa, one important thing is that you're going to have to adapt to adopt our culture here. And what's culture? Language, dressing, you know, public display and behavior, without which you'll never be able to fully embrace the new environment you're living in. You're always going to be like an alien. So when we talk to people about kingdom culture, you know, Oh, your dressing, your language, your behavior, how you treat God's temple, which is your body. People say what? Judge not. Judge not. Where's that coming from? Obviously, it's a strategy of the devil. Don't create a new lie. Just twist the existing one and it's going to deceive people well enough. I think the most important lesson to learn from this second device is that you have to be very careful to see to it that you understand the full picture in every subject. You know, and that starts with you reading the Bible for yourself, because a lot of people just quote sections and quote sections that they heard somewhere. They have no context, no understanding. And well, guess who is happy? Obviously, the third device of the devil that we need to beware and learn from is to maximize your time. A few days ago, we uploaded a video on maximizing your time. It's actually a re-upload. It's a classic. Recently, we have been re-uploading some of our classics, especially the very old videos that we think our new subscribers may not be able to really walk their way through the archive. So you're welcome. And a lot of people could relate to the aspect of maximizing your time. I promise to share a story with you. So seven, eight years ago, back at the university, without yet the full availability of internet here, we were still relying a lot on cyber cafes. So what you basically do is once I had an assignment, I'll go to the cyber cafe and pay for my time, you pay in hours, and I sit there to do my assignment before my time expires. But obviously, once I get there and then I open this thing, wow, I'm really like, oh, there was a new movie out. Oh, look at the trailer of this game. Oh, this man, he released a new message. Oh, this man got married. I'm like, let me get to see and catch up with all those things. And something always happens, you know, like 15 minutes to the end of the time, it's already been programmed for the system to alert you when your time is running out, you know, like 15 minutes left. And that's when you wake up and you realize, oh my goodness, I wasted my time. So I need to maximize this remaining time to make the most out of it. And I tell you, you find yourself, well, I find myself accomplishing in 15 minutes what I couldn't accomplish in two hours. Why? Because the moment I realized that my time was now limited and running out, everything got clarified, the distractions went out, and I could zone in and focus on what is really important. Scriptures tell us when the devil was cast down from heaven to earth, the angels declared that woe to the earth, the, the devil has fallen on you 
And he knows that his time is short. Critical statement. He knows that his time is short. So now that the devil knows that his time is short, what does he do? He maximizes his time. So he never sleeps. He's seen to it that he can get as many people deceived, as many people persuaded out of God's free gift of salvation that he has already made available to them. It's like a new neighbor comes to the neighborhood and then he's like, well, these kids are pretty much blessed. They have everything with their parents. So given that I'm alone and I know I have a limited time to come and take me to jail, I'm going to try to see to it that I pull as many of these kids into crime so that by the time they come to get me, I will not be alone. So what's the lesson here? The devil knows that he has limited time and he's maximizing his time. Now, do you know that you have limited time? Are you maximizing your time? You know, many of us are living as though we are, I don't know, celestial beings or eternal beings. Yes, our spirits are. That's what the scriptures tell us. But the life on earth, we have an account to go and give. We have vision. We have purpose. We have goals, objectives that God has entrusted us with talent that will have to go back and give an account that you gave me two talents you gave me five talents this is the so so amount i've brought back so if you're just going about living your life anyhow then it means the devil is actually smarter than you because he understands that his time is limited you need to realize that your time is limited you need to realize that the people who died yesterday are not special or unspecial we are not different from them. And that consciousness that you don't know when the time is coming, you need to put yourself to clarify yourself. You know, many people get to clarify themselves when the doctor says something like, well, you know, I'm sorry, you have this number of months left to leave. And the objectives, their priorities, everything becomes clear. They, they can now eliminate all the clutter and distractions and focus on what really matters. Of course, that's a luxury you can't afford. And that's not even a luxury I wish on you, you see? So why wait for such a verdict when you can decide right now by yourself to clarify your mind and start maximizing your time? The fourth device of the devil that we can learn from and must be aware of is turning the lie into truth and the truth into a lie. You know, a couple of weeks back, I was watching a video of this lady. I think it was on YouTube Shorts. And she's watching this TikTok video where this man has the shapes and it's a children's game and he takes a shape. The lady calls the, the, the hole in which it's going and then he puts that in the hole. So she gets it right for the first two, which obviously is a square and a rectangle. And then he picks the circle and he says, where does it go? And by the time she says circle, he says, that's right, a square hole. And he puts that. So by the time he does that three, four times, you actually see life draining out of this lady because She's beginning to question her entire existence, you know? It's the same thing if your friends really ganged up and they came and told you black is white and white is blue. And then you're like, no, 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 this shirt is black. And everybody's looking at you and mocking at you like, are you normal? Where are you coming from? This has been white always. You see, you, you begin to question, wait, is my whole life a lie? Has my whole life been a lie? Why, once you start questioning like that, what literally happens is that your brain begins to break down. That is the onset. If you carry on right down like that, you lose touch with reality. You get into what we call dementia because man, our reasoning is based on anchors. It's based on reference points that, okay, this is objective truth. From this truth, I can draw and project other things. So the moment when everything is mixed up and there is no objective truth, it's like a ship without an anchor, without any reference point from the stars, from the light towers, you're just lost in the sea. And what's the end result? You get tossed in any direction that the waves go. So think about it. Isn't that what the enemy is trying to do in society today? The lie is becoming truth. The truth is becoming lie. Every anchor, reference, basic principle is being undone. So at the end of the day, people begin to lose their minds, begin to reconsider what they think to be true, where it's up, where it's down, where it's left, where it's right. If all of that is mixed up, then you're pretty much pliable and fluid to be manipulated for the devil's interest. Perhaps if you have an idea on how to reverse engineer this point for your life and to stand against the wires of the devil, Please drop that in the comments below. The fifth device of the devil we must be aware of and learn from is to conceal secrets. Now, it may shock you, but perhaps you as a believer may look at people that call themselves, you know, Satan worshippers or are in different cults and in different sects 
fraternities and you wonder how on earth do these people actually worship the devil or they are comfortable with that but the research shows that majority of them perhaps even more than 90 percent have no clue they are actually worshiping the devil why because all of those things are concealed in symbols symbols of the sun symbols of serpent symbols of the north so you can actually talk with people in this cult and they are going to tell you no our fraternity is to help people to 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 bring out the the potential in man to become his full self of course that's what they tell the base people but only those who grow in ranks to get to the, the very, very high degrees, if you understand what I'm talking about, get to be revealed the real truth about these things. Now that is scary because you realize that you need to be praying more for these people because you may look at them and you're like, well, they have chosen to worship the devil or they have chosen that part. But actually, it's been concealed from them and, and they're actually thinking they are doing something else. And it's only on the last day, perhaps, when the truth gets revealed that they realize they have been duped all along. Remember, he's the master in deception, the master in cunning. So you wouldn't expect him to tell them, obviously, that uh, I'm coming to take the place of God in your life. Obviously, they'll resist that. So he was going to tell them something different and conceal all of that before they realize it, it's too late. Why? Because if they knew beforehand, they'll probably resist or they'll probably fight back and they'll probably ruin his plans. Do you have a habit or a tendency of speaking a lot to people about the things you're still doing, about the ideas you're still having, about the dreams you still have? Of course, it's not that you don't talk to people. You should have your close, intimate friends, circles, people who think the same like you, so that you can share dreams and share visions and be inspired. But the moment you start making that ex an expose to everyone, the arrows get shot at you, the discouragements, the doubt, the fears, and you find your dreams getting killed or getting crushed or people start fighting you back. But what if everything was concealed? You know, you don't need to tell everyone you're working on something big. You can walk in silence and they only see the results. You can walk in silence and they only see the fruits. Because the moment you start exposing what is yet to be fully cooked, you're already making yourself vulnerable to attacks and destruction. The seed on our list is very interesting and it's pretty much being used a lot these days by the media and that is jamming. You may be wondering what jamming is, but jamming is simply me putting options before you but painting one in a certain way that is morally attacking to you. So if I say it's either you're on my side or you're an animal, right? So now you're thinking you don't want to be on my side, but then what's the alternative? you're an animal or you're an evil wicked person so because you don't want to identify as an evil wicked person you have no choice but to take the lesser evil you may think in your brain even though you disagree with it that is exactly jamming so you know that my plans my objectives are wrong they are evil perhaps they are immoral but because the alternative that I've painted, it's not true. It's just a painting. So you have to be smart enough to overlook that painting that I can disagree with you without hating you. That I disagree with you doesn't mean that I'm a, a, a no good person up to some kind of human destruction. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm simply saying I disagree with you and we have to keep it that way. But if you're ignorant, the enemy uses jamming to put you in a position where you are forced to toe the line because morally you don't want to be associated with the greater evil they are painting that your position actually is. Jamming capitalizes on generalization and the destruction of the individual. So you no longer have an opinion as an individual because I've already told you any opinion other than mine is a group opinion of this kind of people. But how is it that you cannot be in the middle? You can neither be with this, nor can you be with this. No, you're not allowed to be that way. I have to introduce jamming so that you can have no other option than to toe the line. And finally, the last but not the least device of the devil we need to be aware of and learn from, number seven, is to flood and inundate. Flood and inundate your ideas and your views so much so that people cannot see anything else. They are overwhelmed. They are completely covered with your point of view, your agenda, your objectives, or your values to the point that they gradually lose touch 
with the values and ethics and principles that they held dear. So look at media today. Once they have held, you know, uh, public mainstream opinion, what's the next thing? They have to flood it to you in movies, flood it to you in media, in every form in which you are going to pay attention to. They inundate your life with it. So whatever barriers or words of self-control or ethics that you have, eventually get crushed under that pressure so what can we learn from this why we are being flooded and inundated with pollution from every side kids are being targeted for very toxic pollution the obvious answer is that you have to reverse engineer all of this you have to start flooding your kids with what is right you have to start flooding yourself your mind your environment with the right stuff Remember, we cannot be ignorant of the devices of the devil because if we think we are on la la land and life is sweet and pleasant, no, the devil knows his time is short and he has to maximize that time. So we cannot be ignorant of these devices. Those are the seven things we can learn from the devil to reverse engineer and start counteracting his effects and efforts in our lives and our families and our children. I'd like you to tell me in the comments below which of these seven points struck a chord with you. Perhaps you've experienced it or you're experiencing it or you can attest to the reality of it. Please share in the comments below. And if you think there's any other one that we should be aware of, you also drop it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give us some support by giving it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to this channel. It's true, I've been away for a while, focusing mostly on other projects and more of animation, but I know it's about time I came and show you my real face again. So uh, I want to say thank you to all our patrons for making this video possible. You too can support this channel. Your support goes a long way to help us to continue creating inspiring content like this. You can check the link to our Patreon page in the video description below. Hopefully we're going to be meeting again in the next video. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for 500,000 subscribers. Well, I've not been online since then. So I'm thanking you now. And uh, thank you so much for all the support and uh, all the help you give us it's, it's, a, it's been a great journey and uh, we appreciate your part in it all